What's up guys, great news. Today, I got the Valve Steam Deck. Now this is the Q3 model. And as you guys know, the Steam Deck is making headlines all over the internet. Today I'm gonna to be doing an unboxing and I'm gonna give you guys a first impressions of this device. Let's get into it. So before we get into the box, I left these three controllers back there to give you guys a sense of scale as into how the deck compares to the PlayStation 5 DualSense, the Xbox Elite 2 controller, or even the Xbox Series X controller. So let's get into the box and see how this device was packaged and if my device is actually better than the Q1 versions. Your games are going places. Very catchy phrase. Let's get the device out of the box. On the packaging, you can see Valve's address. I believe this is the charger. So pretty simple, one charging brick. The cable is attached to the charging plug itself. And I believe this should be a 65 watt charger if I'm not mistaken. So pretty small and compact, easy to travel with. I wish these would fold in, but at the price of this device, you really can't complain. There's actually a manual included in here, but this is actually important for a lot of people. And that's about it. You do have this, um, I guess this flyer. It gives you some important steps to get the device booted up. So let's get this out of the way. As you guys can see, still in original packaging. So we're just gonna need to pop this open and get into the box. So it tells us a little bit about the Wi-Fi connection, the internet and the Steam account is a minimum um, requirement age of 13 years old, not really meant for kids under 13. I guess that's where the Nintendo Switch falls in. Your games are going places. I must admit, the case feels really good. I like this case already. It's a hard shell, but definitely some flex to it. So it's not something that's gonna break if it falls, but it definitely is firm enough to absorb shock. Here's the little pouch that you can put the charger into or any accessories you wanna take with you. So let's get this seal broken. And here it is guys, the moment of truth, the Valve Steam Deck, Q3 model. Let's get into it. Wow. I've waited months to get my hands on this device. Oh, it feels good. It feels really good. I like it. The triggers feel amazing. The joystick is pretty soft. I 
I like it. I like it a lot. Here is the intake fan. We have the programmable buttons at back. R5, R4, R2, and R1. At the front, the joystick will be R3. But look at that, guys. Look at this device. It feels really good in the hand. The screen looks amazing. Here's the SD card slot. The exhaust for the fans. Volume up, volume down. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. USB-C, this does support display out, the power button, and an LED light indicator. There's also the directional pad, the two joysticks, as I mentioned before, two touch pads, A, B, X, Y, start and select buttons in Xbox style. We have the steam button and the options button. This appears to be a microphone and another microphone right here. There's also two front facing speakers. I'm just gonna get the case out of the way to give you guys a sense of scale and give myself some more room to work with. Here we have the DualSense, the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller and the Xbox Series X and S controller. This is the Steam Deck in comparison to those controllers. As you guys can see, the Steam Deck is about the same width as two Xbox controllers or a PS5 DualSense and an Xbox Elite controller. It does feel similar in the hand to an Xbox controller considering the grips at the back do help your palms grip the device better. So what I'm going to do now is plug this in for charging. The light turned on. And there it is. First official boot of my Valve Q3 Steam Deck. Now this is the 256 gig model. I felt like this was a good option between the more expensive 512 gig model and the slower storage 64 gig model. Considering I'd like to try Windows on this device, I was a bit skeptical of having that 64 gig storage as my base storage. And additionally, considering you can expand the storage up to one terabyte as of right now, I felt like getting an SD card would be a better option than investing in the 512 gig model. As far as the anti-glare option, I'm definitely gonna add a screen protector on this device, which would then defeat the purpose of the anti-glare coating. With that being said, if you feel like another option works best for you, you can't go wrong. It's all about personal preference. Just like I did my research, you can do yours. So let's get into the setup process. Here we have the language. We should pick English. Now let's set up the Wi-Fi connection. After connecting to the internet, my system immediately began downloading an update. As you can see, the update is installing. I'm gonna let the system complete the update and I'll be back with you guys after the initial setup. Okay, so I'm finally back and I'll admit, it's been about two weeks since my initial unboxing and setup. So I've had two weeks with this device. I've did some tinkering, like getting Epic Game Store and Origin running on this device. And I've also added a 256 micro SD card on the bottom. So with that being said, let's take a look at the Valve Steam Deck Q3 model. I noticed that the Q1 models had um, some issues with the fans. The fans on the Q3 are pretty much silent. You do hear it, but there is no irritable sound to the tone. The screen seems really good. 
considering this is not an OLED like the Nintendo Switch, the latest version, the colors are great. I've had many of my friends try playing this device and just to get some feedback on it, their first impressions is, wow, it's a lot bigger in person. Second impression is it feels good in the hands. So with that being said, let's talk more about the gaming experience. So here I have a few games that are native to Steam. These run perfectly. I would suggest definitely keeping your library based on Steam and not getting too much games on Epic Game Store or Origin Game Store. I've had great luck with Origin working and syncing games, but with the Heroic Launcher, it's quite difficult. A lot of games do not sync your progress and it really defeats the purpose of gaming on the go and not being able to pick up where you left off on your desktop. Now, it's a great substitute for gaming on the deck, but definitely Origin has been my best experience so far. All the games from Origin syncs perfectly and I have no issues having the game start up, not even with the Proton layer. From my personal experience, I think that I would stick with getting my games going forward all through Steam or in Valve basically because sometimes there is a bit of tinkering that you do have to do in order to get the games up and running. For example, with Heroic Launcher, you do have to sometimes um, change the wine presets. When launching the Heroic Launcher, a lot of games may not start and you do have to tinker around with like um, the wine presets per game. And I don't have anything installed on this side right now. But as you guys can see, I do have, um, let me just get this overlay out of there. As you guys can see, I do have my Epic Games Store and my GOG Store here. I do have a, a lot of games on the Epic Store, approximately 212. But with that being said, it's um, it's really difficult to play these games and not have your progress synced over on your desktop. I'm going to have to avoid using the Epic Games Store on the Steam Deck. But as you guys can see, I do have quite a significant amount of games here. And it's tough not being able to take this over with me to the Steam Deck. But it's a small sacrifice in the greater scale of things. Um, Ghost Runner works great, um, great experience. It does have FSR 1.0 native, so you can use the system's FSR or you can use the game's inbuilt FSR. Both work great. The Witcher works well. I think you can get approximately 58 to 55 FPS with, um, with the Witcher 3 at medium settings. And there's just so much more for this device to offer. In desktop mode, I was able to actually use a keyboard and a mouse and get those launchers installed. If we take a look at the Origin launcher, as you guys can see, I am in the native origin launcher for desktop and I'm able to browse all my games and I'm able to start any game that I have downloaded and installed. Now there is a workaround to get the games to install to your micro SD card. There's tons of videos on YouTube that you guys can look that up but by default the games will install to your internal SSD. You may want to have that set to download to your micro SD card because it will fold the internal storage a lot quicker. With that being said, the games run perfectly. Um, games like games like Need for Speed, I'm getting approximately 40. I'm getting about 40 to 50 FPS with Need for Speed Heat at medium settings. That's with FSR on, of course. I'm also getting the same for Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. With Battlefield 4, I'm getting 
over 60 frames per second with high settings and FSR enabled. That's with the system built FSR, of course. Let's talk about how it actually feels the game. The grips on the bottom are excellent. It really helps give you a more comfortable gaming position by having the controller arch in the palm of your hands. It just fits naturally. Now I will admit the SOC or the APU, which will be the processing chip, does get noticeably hot when playing games like Apex Legends and more demanding titles. The good thing about that is you never feel that heat as your hands are always gripping these palm grips. The heat is more centralized to the middle of the device where the SOC lies. So you don't notice that there's any significant change in temperature unless you actually place your hands over the exhaust, which is at the top or right near the charging port at the back. With that being said, I think I'm getting approximately two to two and a half hours battery life on intense games like Apex Legends, but on more less demanding games, I can definitely see myself getting four hours easily. On your home screen, you'll get a list of the recent games that you've played or the current game you're currently playing. With that being said, it makes it easier to hop back into something that you've recently played and also just having a great gaming experience. I will recommend the Aperture Desk job for anyone who just gets their hands in a Steam Deck. It does a really good job of explaining the controls to you and letting you know the full features of this device. It gives you a tutorial and more of a gaming experience. So here is where you'll definitely want to start with um, the games that are also recommended for deck. That'll basically give you the best gaming experience on this device. In my experience, I've tried games that are not necessarily great on deck and they have worked like um, Shadow of the Tomb Raider and even the first Tomb Raider works well. Um, in desktop mode, you can customize this interface. You can basically select the games that you'd like to place in each um, subcategory or subfolder. And this is what I've done here by adding games like Battlefield, Need for Speed Heat, and also Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. These are non-native Steam games. I was able to customize these into the Steam favorites folder from the desktop mode. Let's take a look at the desktop mode now. So to get into the desktop mode, you're going to want to press the Steam button. You're going to go down to power. You're going to press A and you're going to switch to desktop mode. I'm going to let you guys see how long this actually takes to switch from the gaming interface to desktop mode, starting now. And that's it, pretty quick. Now let me grab my keyboard and mouse and let's get into the desktop experience. So I do have a USB-C to USB-A adapter and on that I have a USB hub. I do have two additional um, USB storage devices. These are housing the EXE files for the launchers and I don't need this one. So I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna have this connected now and the dongle is for my keyboard and mouse. So let me get that set up and let's hop into the desktop experience. Before I get started, I do want to apologize if there's any glare on the screen. As I mentioned before, this is the 256 gig model. Therefore, I do not have the anti-glare coating. But in my experience, I've gamed outdoors and indoors and visibility is perfectly fine. Now, of course, if you have a bright light shining at the device, you will get some reflective properties. But for standard use, I think it's perfect. And here we're able to download a lot of new apps to really enhance the gaming experience on this device. The Discover Store is basically akin to an app store on the Apple device or the Play Store on an Android device. This is where you go to download new apps, which really helps create a more custom device. There are tons of things that you can find here like Heroic Launcher, which is a launcher that supports GOG and Epic Games. And there are a ton of different apps. You guys can definitely be sure to join like Reddit, Steam Deck groups, or even any Facebook groups that support the Steam Deck. There are tons of suggestions, stuff like MU Deck. You can get that set up with downloading the MU Deck um, software from online. And there's so much you can do with this device. And that's the beauty of the Valve Steam Deck. 
It's such an open platform. You can wipe SteamOS, you can wipe Linux, and you can install Windows 11 or Windows 10 on this device. You can customize this device to work just the way you want it. And that's not something you get often in a gaming console. So that's where this device fits in. It's more of a PC than a gaming console. But if you want the simplicity of a gaming console, you can stick to the SteamOS platform and you'll have that gamer-like interface where you're able to purchase games. And as you guys can see, we have a full browsing experience. We're able to go through the Steam website. We can browse the games in a desktop mode. We can purchase games. We can log into our account. We have the full experience. We can also minimize these windows, drag them around, pop them to the side. You have a great experience in desktop mode. You can also attach this to an external monitor. I do have a dongle that does support HDMI out. However, I wanted to give you guys a more simpler experience with this device. Most of you might be first time into the Steam Deck, you've never had a PC before, or maybe you've actually had a gaming laptop, but you've never really dived into Linux before. And I'll admit, Linux is a bit different to Windows. Um, the subfolders are much more complicated if you're trying to find applications and you're trying to locate different files. It can be a bit more difficult, but once you get used to it, it's pretty cool. It does have a lot of flexibility and a lot more freedom than um, Windows, but that comes at the cost of being a bit more complicated. Overall, I do like it. I do like the flexibility and the freedom of um, Linux, but it definitely is not identical to Windows. So bear that in mind if you're coming from a traditional Windows-based experience. That's it for now, guys. I'm still learning this device. I'm gonna have a full dedicated review in probably another two months because the Steam Deck is always updating. There's always new software updates being released. And I don't think you can give a comprehensive review on a device like this within two weeks. I'm gonna have some separate videos uploaded with gameplay, showing you guys how the system performs in games like The Witcher, Need for Speed, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and many more. Be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer them. And if you need any advice on tinkering with your Steam Deck, you can also ask me in the comments below. If I can't answer it myself, I will direct you to an article or a YouTube channel that can provide an answer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Peace.